I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about OAuth, CSS Zen Garden, DevTools, and more. Let's check it out. First up is this really cool website called Meet the Ipsums. Now, if you've ever been designing web pages before, you might have needed to use some placeholder text in place of the real thing. And that's where you usually use lorem ipsum text to just kind of put in some filler text. This site offers a whole bunch of different types of lorem ipsum text that they've gathered from around the web. And let's go ahead and take a look. Look at that, you have normal lorem ipsum text, but then you have coffee ipsum, cat ipsum, veggie ipsum, a whole bunch of other different ones. If we scroll down here, you can see that there are quite a few of them, so they've done a lot to put all these in one place. There's even uh, Johnny Ipsum right there, shameless plug. I did put that together based on uh, things I feel like Johnny Ive would say. But uh, there's a whole bunch of them, and you can just click on any one of these sites and go ahead and grab the Lorem Ipsum text and then paste it into your website. So pretty nifty site. I think it's fun to use different types of Lorem Ipsum text just because it adds a little bit more variety to your day-to-day -day design work. And that's at meettheipsums.com. That is correct. I met the Ipsums recently. Did you? I was at their house for dinner, and it was delightful. Next up, we have a project called Tracking.js, which is built to change the way you interact with your browser. Now, there's an interesting video that they have on their page, but in essence, this guy is using two uh, sticks that have glowing orbs on the end of them, and then using the webcam, he can actually interact with his browser in real time. Now, are those the PlayStation Move? Is that what those are? I have no idea. I, I think I don't, that's what he's using. I don't game like you kids these days do. I see. But uh, they have a nice video on the page here, which luckily for all of our viewers is not loading right now. Awesome. Um, but what's actually interesting about this is you can see when he's using this, you get the X, Y, and Z coordinates of what is going on in the different frames for the video. So once you have these different coordinates, you can use them in JavaScript to do really cool things on your pages. You could use this to potentially design some sort of in-browser game uh, or pretty much anything. Anyway, we'll have a link to that in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse or on iTunes, search for us at the Treehouse Show and leave us favorable reviews. Please. 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 If you like this show, that's one way that you can, you know, thank us by leaving us a review in iTunes. It's I, better than money. I, I, think, I think they got it, Jason. All right. Next up is this really cool tool called Webflow, and on the site it says design responsive websites visually, so I assume this allows you to uh, do exactly that. If we go ahead and click on Start Demo here, it will load it up. Whoa, look at that. Whoa. Pulls in the UI on the left and right sides. Is this the internet or the future? You can go ahead and click on Desktop View, Tablet View, or Phone View. So if I click on that, look at that. It's what? Tablet. Click on that. Now we're on an iPhone. More like on a spaceship. Tomorrow is today. In the future. Truly. If we go ahead and click over on this panel here, we can go ahead and edit some of these style attributes. So if I like click on, oops, that's actually a real link. Uh-oh. Uh, Don't click it. So if we go ahead and click on one of these, we can go ahead and change various style attributes over here. And if we click on the navigator here, it will actually show us where that element is in the DOM tree. So we can traverse the entire DOM tree here. When you say navigator, do you mean Netscape navigator? Not exactly the same thing, but close. And you can see that it has the entire DOM tree here, so we can go ahead and click on any one of these. So that's pretty nifty. There's a bunch of other tools here that we don't really have time to get into. Uh, for example, you can toggle this responsive grid and do a whole bunch of other cool stuff. But after you're all done, it will go ahead and output the code for you. And I think, you know, overall, this is a very different way to design responsive websites. Normally, people will lay stuff out in Photoshop and then do all of their responsive grid calculations. Or 
they will actually just design in the browser and maybe take a mobile first approach and then scale up as needed. This tool is basically a WYSIWYG tool or what you see is what you get where you lay out all the elements on the page and then you export the code. Now the difference is or so they claim this code is actually good. The problem with WYSIWYG tools historically has been that the code that they produce is actually not that great. We're looking at you Microsoft front page. That's right. But uh, this is actually pretty good. It's, uh, it's a new class of tools that are starting to emerge uh, because designing responsive sites can be really, really tricky because you have to design all of the different proportions instead of thinking in pixels. But uh, this is a tool that might make it a little bit easier. So I suggest giving it a try and seeing if it works into your workflow, or should I say Webflow. Oh, bam. See what you did there? That yep. was good. I like Webflow. That's a good name. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I feel like that's, you know, what you get into when you're really rocking out some web pages. Just a Webflow. Don't interrupt my Webflow. I got this. See, Jason, as a professional, you have full license to coin your own terms. All right. So full license. Webflow is when you're just really rocking out and making web pages. Look it up on Urban Dictionary. In a few days, because we have to add it. That's right. Next up, OAuth.io. This is OAuth that just works. Uh, like I said, it's OAuth.io or OAuthio. That might be how you pronounce it. Not really sure. Uh, so one of the problems that you might run into when you're integrating OAuth into your application is that there's different versions of OAuth, which are slightly different to use. And there's just a ton of different OAuth providers, and you need to submit different URLs and keys and tokens and a whole bunch of stuff. It can get kind of cumbersome to keep track of everything, and that's what OAuthio does for you. Uh, this is actually a paid service, and they're not sponsoring the show. We just figured we should get that out there. Just saw it, thought it was cool. Um, anyway, it's very, very easy to use. You just go on, set up your keys with OAuth.io, configure your OAuth provider, and bam, you're pretty much good to go. Just integrate a couple of their scripts, and you're ready to get rocking. Um, anyway, there's a ton of different um, API methods that you can use. There's a, there's a great API for getting pretty much everything you need here. Uh, anyway, check that out. That's OAuth.io. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is this fun CSS animation tool called Styly. I know it's fun, and I know it's an animation tool because it says that right on the web page. Actually, there's a lot of other tools like this that will help you create CSS3 animations that can be pretty difficult, particularly if you want to create your own custom animation curves. But this tool makes it a lot easier to create those very complex uh, custom timing functions. So if you look here, you can see that this little sphere or circle is moving from left to right. And I can actually toggle these coordinates here to make it move a little bit differently. But the really cool thing is over here, I can actually change the animation that's happening over here. And you can do pretty standard stuff like ease in, ease out, ease in quad, etc. all the things that you've come to expect. But uh, there's actually a few things here that are much more complex. So we're going to try a bounce here. And if I move this down, you can see that it's actually bouncing along, which if you were to code this up manually, it would be very difficult to do indeed. So if we click over here on the CSS that it generates and scroll down, you can see just how many keyframes you would actually need to create in order to create a nice fluid bounce like that. So it's pretty incredible that this tool is able to do that all for you. And uh, I think it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, save you some time. Yep. Next up, we have an article on the David Walsh blog called Nine Mind-Blowing Canvas Demos. Now, if you don't want your mind blown, don't check out this article. Especially because it's going to blow your mind nine times. Yeah. So maybe mentally prepare. Take a, a warm bath or something before you check out this article. Uh, now, we've talked about one of these things on the Treehouse Show before. Just saying we're a little ahead of the curve here. Uh, we talked about number two, which was the terrible cloth. Now, uh, terrible like you could tear something, not terrible cloth. 
Not as in it was bad. Right. Right. Uh, but anyway, there's a, like I said, nine different mind blowing demos, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but there are really just a ton of things. Check that out. It immediately crashed Chrome. Let me, uh, let me reload that. Never That's mind. amazing. I know. The wonderful demo. Isn't that, isn't that the great thing about being live? Um, anyway, just go ahead and trust me that more of these work. I'm not going to go through and display anymore, but assuming that you can get it to work, they are pretty cool. And we'll have that in the show notes. All right. Live TV, Nick. Well, next that's up, what we're on right now. <laughs> that's what we wish we were on right now. Next up is CSS Zen Garden. Now you might be thinking, whoa. Whoa. I've, I've heard of that before. Where yeah. have I heard of that? Nick, you, I've heard of that before. You heard of it 10 years ago. What? CSS Zen Garden was actually created back in 2003. Oh, three, baby. And back then, it was a really incredible example of what you could do with CSS. A lot of contributors would take the exact same HTML and then they would apply their own styling to it, apply their own CSS without changing the HTML. So that was the, the rule, is that you couldn't change the HTML. It was a great showcase of CSS at the time because this is kind of before there were best practices for CSS integrated. So exactly. you know, it wasn't kind of it wasn't a standard thing for companies to be using CSS. So it was a great place to go to showcase your work and get best practices established. And of course, over time, CSS became you know, much more widespread and best practices were established. So the CSS Zen Garden kind of fell out of favor and fell into disrepair. I guess nobody really cared or people forgot about it. Yeah, there wasn't really a need for people to contribute once CSS became a best practice and a standard. Exactly. But the CSS Zen Garden has been revived. Oh, now. right. Now that we are living in this age of CSS3, responsive web design, retina displays, and so many other things that have uh, thrown a wrench into what was standard practice. So it's a pretty exciting time to uh, be using CSS. And CSS Zen Garden shows off all the cool stuff you can do. So. If we go ahead and click on maybe another one of these, a robot named Jimmy, there it is, bam. And the cool thing about this is, is this is exactly the same HTML. Scroll down, look at what Jimmy, look at what Jimmy does, he disappears. Whoa, look Thanks, at that. Thanks, parallax scrolling. Incredible. But it's exactly the same HTML as this page that you're looking at here, even though it looks super different. And that just kind of demonstrates the power of CSS. So I think it's really cool. And you can go ahead and actually contribute new CSS files to this. And yeah, definitely check it out. I'm really glad to see that it's back, you know, now that we have all, the, all these great things that we can do with CSS. And there's so much available, you might forget about something. There really is a need for it again. Yeah. It's great that it's back. Thanks, Dave Shea. Thanks. Next up, we have an article called the Chrome DevTools Revolutions 2013 or 013 as we say here on the show. So there are some new things here in the Chrome DevTools that we're just gonna go through real quickly. Uh, first is the concept of workspaces. Uh, workspaces are pretty interesting. They can let you map resources served from a local web server to files on disk. So this means that you can edit your different source files in the sources panel and those changes will persist right in the files locally. Uh, so that's really, really awesome and just great to use. As you can see, you know, you edit something in your CSS rules uh, on the left. They show that in the dev tools right there. It's immediately reflected in your editor. Uh, so then they go through and tell you how exactly to make that work. Uh, you can also map folders to URLs, give you kind of the, the same idea there. Um, you can even debug SAS in Chrome now, which is a usually welcome addition since SAS is becoming, you know, more and more widespread. Um, finally, you can, uh, let's see, got SAS debugging and then just a whole bunch of things that you have in the dev tools. So go ahead and check this out. Dev tools have already been great. There's way too much to keep track of as it is. So go ahead and check out this article in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Well, that is it for this week. On Twitter, I am at NickRP. And I am at JCypher. For more information on anything we talked about, including show notes, check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash GoTreeHouse, or in iTunes, search for us at The Treehouse Show. And don't forget to leave a review. Please. 
And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.